Hello and welcome to another webinar Wednesday that we are again doing on a Thursday. What's going on, Marg and Kevin? <laughs> it's just hard to get organized on a Wednesday. <laughs> I know. We should maybe just rename it to like webinar Thursday now or something. <laughs> hi, Megla. Hi, Marg. Don't you girls know how to spell Wednesday? <laughs> it's Wednesday somewhere. Is it Wednesday anywhere? No, it isn't Wednesday anywhere no, now. No, not anymore. Not anymore. No, it, not was, anymore. it was. A couple of hours ago, it was somewhere. Well, what's yeah. important that is that we are here and we've got a really good topic today and something that a lot of people have been asking about in the group yep. over the last few months. So selling on Amazon India. That's going to be our topic for today. What do you guys think, Marg and Kevin? I mean, it is... Um, you know, sort of challenging to sell on Amazon India. It's not as straightforward as selling on maybe, Jap not Japan, I guess, US or, or UK, but there is a huge opportunity, right? Well, I think there's a great opportunity, but I think actually um, after sort of speaking with Samesh and um, Viral, we've sort of learned that it's not quite as easy um, as a lot more challenges, but I think it's worth for people to actually listen and understand and make that decision where they want to go from here themselves. I think they need to know the facts. It's great. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people are going to learn a lot of things to, tonight about, you know, sort of India and, the, you know, the intricacies of, of selling on India. It's a massive platform. It's obviously a massive opportunity for those that, you know, but it's not for everybody, Megla, is it? Yeah, that's right. I think it's not for everybody. And, and, after the presentation today, I think a lot of people will be able to decide if it's for them or not, yeah. right? Yeah. Or if they want to explore it a little bit more. So, um, yeah, we've got two guests. Let's uh, invite them on stage now. So, first of all, we've got Viral Jain from Mumbai. And we've also got Somesh and Jasmine uh, from the UK. Hello, Somesh, Jasmine, Viral, how are you? Hello. Hello. Hi, hi there. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi. Cool. So uh, first of all, we've got a presentation by Viral and Viral is going to be talking about product research for Amazon India and what sorts of products are selling well. So Viral himself is a very successful Amazon seller on India and he does some coaching. And then Sumesh and Jasmine are going to be talking about how you can set up a company um, to sell on Amazon India and all of the government regulatory <laughs> compliances and <laughs> all of the not so much fun stuff. And um, Samesh and Jasmine's partner, Jonathan, will also be joining us later. So before we get into the presentations, uh, why don't you guys do a bit of an introduction and then we'll get into Viral's presentation. So Viral, do you want to tell people about yourself and how you work with Amazon sellers? Sure. So my name is Viral and I've been selling on Amazon since uh, five years and I've sold on Amazon US, UK, India and uh, like selling on all these three platforms. I have understood the all like like it's quite different when you sell on Amazon India as compared to all the other platforms. There's a lot more challenges when it comes to India um, as compared to any other countries that you sell like any any European or uh, US market. Apart from that, I also teach and coach uh, new sellers uh, in finding new products, like uh, people who are just started or people who are, you know, like they don't know how to do a product research in India. So I specialize in helping people uh, who want to source products from India and sell it in India. And I also help people to, uh, you know, uh, like I also teach them how to do uh, advertising, like uh, I, like I teach, I have an entire program and a workshop, which I, which is only dedicated to, you know, mastering and learning how to advertise uh, on any Amazon platform, India or anything else. So yeah, these are two things which I help uh, Amazon sellers with. Fantastic. So Mesh and Jasmine, what about you? Yeah. Hi. Uh, nice to meet everyone. We're based in the UK. I'm originally from India. My wife's half Indian and uh, <laughs> we are also Amazon sellers. And uh, many years ago, we had the dream to set up something for uh, helping facilitate international sellers to come to India. But of course, we were waiting for a lot of laws to change. As you know, India is a very different beast altogether. A lot of uh, challenges, like regulations and foreign ownership and things like that. And you know what? Very nice thing that has happened in the last recent past where some laws have changed and made things a lot easier for uh, you know, foreign companies and foreign sellers, international sellers to sell in India. Uh, and it's a little different from what you would normally do, like selling in the US or even the UK, Canada. But yes, the 
the the you've got to jump through a few hoops but yeah the rewards can be quite big and viral is there uh, to tell us his own personal first-hand experience so we're really looking forward to hearing uh his side of the story as well right fantastic i'm jasmine i'm from england and uh, i've spent many many years living in india i used to be a volunteer there and uh, did a lot of fundraising for charities there and in the last few years we've been selling on uh, amazon in the us and canada and europe so um, this is a something we'd like to share with you about amazon india yeah. we're looking forward to telling you i guess one one nice thing is that we understand uh, what it's like to try to manage uh, a business remotely in different countries dealing with multiple regulations and it's a part of the whole game. I mean, you just have to do it. There's nothing you can do. So it's it's good. It's good. Uh, but yeah, it's always helpful to have some someone to help you through. Yeah. Right. And okay, Jonathan, fantastic. Sorry, Megha, yes. just because Jonathan's not here. I'll just give a little introduction. Unfortunately, he's a bit late. But uh, Jonathan has been in the tech and uh, finance and regulatory compliance uh, in different countries in India, in the UK, Europe. And he's just uh, a very IT and regulation guy. <laughs> he's very dynamic and multi-talented. So yeah, you'll get to see him. We're very <laughs> happy to have him with us. Thanks. OK, great. Thank you so much for that. OK, so let's get started. I'm going to share um, Raul's presentation. So guys, if you have any questions, type them in the comments, and uh, we will address those questions. Uh, once Viral has finished finished his presentation, so let's get started. So I'm going to remove uh, you know the others from the screen so that uh, yeah. So Viral, um, why don't you get started and you can just tell me when you want to change the slides. Sure, awesome guys. So let's start with uh, selling on Amazon India. Uh, next slide, please, Mehigla. <laughs> okay, so overview about the e-commerce in India. Next, please. So India is the second fastest growing e-commerce market in the world. So we all have witnessed, like if you guys have sold on Amazon US, we know that US uh, market is very, very big in terms of the volume, in terms of the margin. But after India, like sorry, after US, there are other markets like Japan, so it is Japan, there is Europe, but India is now becoming the fastest growing market uh, in terms of e-commerce in the world. Now, the reason is because we have a huge population of around 1.35 billion. And now a projected 600 million internet users are, are going to come, uh, like it's, it's going to raise to 600 million uh, internet users in the country by 2021. Uh, the e-commerce market is expected to grow to $200 billion by 200, 2026. Uh, from $38.5 billion uh, just in the year of 2017, which is approximately 51% annual growth year over year. Next. Uh, you can see the chart over here. There, uh, it is like the growth, like it, it, it is a list of all the countries uh, by terms of growth. Uh, so you can see the top 10 countries ranked by their retail e-commerce sales in the year 2019, you can see the Mexico is growing by 35% followed by India and followed by other countries like Philippines, China. So India is also one of the fastest growing countries, uh, growing at 31% uh, annually over year over year. Next, please. Uh, yes. <laughs> So why is India Indian market booming, right? There are, there are multiple reasons why Indian market or Indian e-commerce is booming now. Uh, there is a lot of increase in terms of the access to the internet and the smartphone penetration. So before, like long back, like few years back, there was like a lot of chunk of Amazon, like of India was not able to access smartphones because it was expensive. But now smartphone prices have dropped to so so rock bottom that everyone now uses a smartphone with an internet also the india also india has a world's lowest data rates in terms of the internet access their calling rates it is one of the world's lowest data uh, you can see the article at uh, cable.co.uk um, this has led to the indian e-commerce rev revenue growing at an annual rate of around 51 percent which is also one of the world's highest growing uh, rate next please 
So some of the facts, like uh, if you have been selling on other platforms and you don't have experience about India, India is a very, very different animal, right? Uh, so majority of shopping in India is done by cash and not through debit or credit cards. So in India, uh, it's a it's a very liquid kind of a market. Like people like to buy through cash. They don't have plastic cards or debit or credit cards. They like like majority of buying in India happens through cash. So it is like the major portion comes through uh, cash on delivery and not through credit card debit cards. Next, please. Uh, some other facts about the uh, like how India works is uh, India is a hub of manufacturing. So many products are produced by in India itself. Like uh, we specialize in a lot of uh, metal products, copper products. Uh, we specialize in a lot of clothing. So all these uh, the things are produced in India and it is also sold in India. People over here look for uh, value. Like if they feel that if if the product that you have sold on online and they feel the there is no value for money, they will return without hesitation. It is not like in the US that uh, they don't care. Like if they got it, it's not good. They will throw it away, but they will not ask for a refund. Uh, it is vice versa over here. If they don't like it, they will return it even after five days, six days. They do not, they do not forget. They remember that, right? Uh, the third one is that you can easily find suppliers in India. And once the trust and relationship is established with the Indian suppliers, they know you, uh, you do, you have done three, four good transactions. They will also give you a lot of credit terms. So you don't have to even put your money after a few transactions. Next, please. Also, Amazon has uh, two types of payment methods, like all the, like, uh, yeah, there are two types of payment methods. Uh, one is cash on delivery. Other is the electronic payments. So it is very, very simple. There is nothing uh, complicated. Electronic means that Amazon collects money uh, only via two things. One is that if, if the consumer at the other end is paying through uh, a debit or credit card, or he has given, like there is an option where uh, he can give, uh, like he can order the products and when it comes to their doorstep, they will give them the cash instead of uh, using a debit or a credit card. So they collect via two methods, cash on delivery and electronics. Next, please. Uh, so cash on delivery. Uh, so I, as I told you before, like a lot of, uh, buying in India happens via cash. So this is something which is mandatory. You can see Uber uh, and like a lot of foreign countries which come like foreign companies which come into India, they have to adopt to this model. Otherwise, uh, they are missing a lot of sales. So cash and delivery leads to more sales. Um, you know, it leads to more sales and more shoppers who don't even have a credit card or debit card. They will, uh, you know, they, they will order because they have cash to pay. Next, please. Uh, so apart from Amazon, there are other top players in the e-commerce or in India. So there is Amazon, there is Flipkart, there is Mintra, there is Paytm. Next, please. So, but the major market is dominated only by the two market leaders. Next, please. Which is Amazon and Flipkart. Next, please. So some of the best tools to do product research on Amazon India is only Helium 10 because um, like we have been using a lot of different tools like Amazon Scout and uh, Jungle Scout, but the data is very, very inaccurate. But Helium 10 uh, just announces entry into India. And since it's since then, it's been a game changer, right? Because we all know Helium 10 so very well. And uh, now it has come to India. So it becomes very, very easier uh, in terms of, you know, accessing the software and doing the product research and finding relevant keywords. Next, please. Uh, the other few categories which are uh, doing very, very well on Amazon India, uh, which are booming, uh, is, like, you know, there are four to five categories. One is home and kitchen, which is huge. Like the catalog is humongous in terms of all the categories that Amazon India has. Then there's electronics, which is also one of the fastest growing categories. There's sports and fitness, there's beauty and health and personal care. Next, please. Uh, so let's, let's talk about the opportunities and the pitfalls. So opportunities, uh, I mean, uh, selling on Amazon India is not that uh, that of a hassle in terms of the competition. There's a moderate amount of competition. Uh, not a very uh, like not everyone is very well averse with how Amazon algorithm works, the ranking hacks, uh, advertising. They are like very simple sellers like you and me, like every, every day to day uh, people who just want to start a business. They start selling on uh, Amazon India. They don't know how to do research, uh, you know, listing optimization. So it's a it's a moderate level of competition, not extreme. 
Uh, most sellers don't even know what is private label and don't even understand how Amazon's algorithm work. Uh, the advertising cost is dirt cheap. The highest cost per click that we have, like I've seen in, is like 32 rupees, which is 0 0.43 cents in supplements, right? Uh, next, please. Uh, even COVID-19 has led to a lot of non-online shop shoppers to come online and now they are developing this habit and the culture of getting you know goods uh, through the online mechanism. Next, please. So some of the pitfalls, like <laughs> there, there are higher, higher return returns as compared to any other market. So you can you can have a pretty good uh, you know guess about 10 to 12 percent of the returns. Like out of your total sales, 10 to 12 percent is something which is average returns from customers. So returns come like two for two, two reasons. Like if the product is undelivered, right? If they are ordering cash on delivery, let's say you they have ordered and then they decide they don't want to buy, uh, they can just deny the delivery and that is what is uh, returned. And then there's value for money. If they feel the product is uh, not as per what it, you have charged, they will return it. A volume based business, uh, the margins are typically 10 to 17% after all the expenses. And uh, the most of the business in India happens on the volumes. Like uh, they do not believe in having like 10 units a day. They, they believe in having 100 units a day, uh, selling 100 units a day with a little bit less margin as compared to other marketplaces. Next, please. Uh, compliance is also one of the issues in India. Like we have a lot of compliances that you have to go through. Uh, you have to have your GST. You have to have like uh, you have to did like you have to file monthly a uh, TDS uh, on Amazon's uh, you know commission. Then uh, you need to have like when you become a little bit better seller, uh, Amazon warehouses has now limited capacity, right? The, the sellers are increasing two folds every, every month. So Amazon is struggling to have a huge capacity in terms of warehousing. So if you are growing, there may be chances that you want to send a lot of goods, but you don't have the capacity. So third party warehousing may be a hindrance to you, right? Next, please. So now uh, the interesting part, how can overseas sellers sell on Amazon? So you need to have a company formed in India and it has to be a private limited company with one Indian director uh, that, and that Indian director has to be a local person. Also, you need an Indian bank account with a GST number, right? Next, please. So if you're interested in understanding if this is something that uh, your brand or you would be interested in venturing out how how to like if, if you would be able to even be successful or is that something that is a good fit for you you can book a consulting 30 minute consulting call for me at a 50 dollar and uh, my link would be given by uh, mr uh, miss megla in the group thank you everyone great thanks a lot um Viral, for that so very comprehensive uh information yeah. over there and um so yeah i mean if anybody's interested we'll, we'll come back to viral's uh, calendar link and we'll post it in the description send it out by email as well and we'll, we'll show his email address at the end of the webinar too so um yeah cash and delivery so Viral, that's quite interesting um is that uh you know a requirement or can sellers opt out of cash and delivery like we don't want to do cash and delivery you, you can't you can't that is mandatory okay. Okay. Because for real, right. do we have to hire bodyguards as well? Tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> no. Depends if you're if you're going to do the delivery yourself. <laughs> <that's probably laughs> <awesome. laughs> yeah. Right. Sanada has a question. Hello, everyone. Your webinars are so very interesting and full of fantastic information. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question for selling in India. Do I need a company based in India, or can I use my EU company? So yeah, you do need a company in India, but I'm not sure if you can actually use your EU company to set up like a representative office in India. That's a possibility too. And our next guest would probably be able to answer your question more in, in detail. So um, Samesh and Jasmine, are you guys ready for your presentation? Yep, we are. Hey, that was very okay. good, girl. Uh, you, uh, some of the points he covered, actually, we will touch again, but hey, let's okay. get on. Get on. <laughs> Yeah, let's get on with it. Yes. Um, okay, so I, I I don't see Jonathan here yet. He'll be uh, so maybe here so. With us in just a few minutes. Okay, cool. So yeah, when he's here, I'll just add him to the screen and um, yeah. So yeah, go ahead, um, Samesh. I'll just, yeah. uh, so just let me know when you want to change this. Global slide. Seller Solutions. We call Global mm -hmm. Seller Solutions, and we just uh, bring access to new markets. And you know, some of the things that uh, can really help you. Next slide. Uh, is that it helps you to uh, diversify 
to new markets because you can get new revenue streams and you also can reduce risks through diversification and also it adds value to your business right okay so next is uh we're going to talk about india as you know so it's a huge opportunity as you heard from viral uh, why india you got 1.2 billion people and uh, the retail market is going to be 1.1 trillion dollars by next year uh, in 2022 and it's an english speaking market mobile data is very very cheap uh, did you know that about 6 million unique buyers are being added to the e-commerce marketplaces every month so that's massive right so it's, it's extremely cheap uh, keep going um, and then it's a, one of the fastest growing markets in the world and it is very highly regulated as you heard from viral and there is low outside competition amazon india has 65 percent repeat buyers you've got flipkart and you've got other marketplaces as well like snap deal and shop clues ebay and uh you know it's the nice thing about india is that unlike say the uk or the us amazon is not the only player the big big player you know you've got Flipkart, which is owned by Walmart now. Yeah, next, please. Okay, so you've got multiple sales seasons. Like, okay, on the left is what you would normally get in Europe and North America. Like you've got Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving. And some of those uh, holidays and festivals do, uh, you know, apply to the Indian market. Uh, but then you've got a whole bunch of other occasions where you've got Republic Day, it's in January, Independence Day in August, then there's Diwali, which is the biggest festival and the biggest season. There's Holi in March, the Shara again in October. Thanksgiving is not so much, but Christmas, yes, New Year's. And then you've got Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine, Valentine's, and then you've got all the regular, you know, regional festivals. And India loves holidays, you know, so every holiday is an occasion for uh, sales. Next, please. Yeah. And so uh, it's got 100 million products growing, hundreds of categories, nine fa facilities around the country, and, and 33 delivery centers. It's increasing, of course. And Amazon Prime is extremely cheap. Um, uh, it's you know very, very cheap, as, as you can see. And Amazon shipping covers around 90 to 97% of those shows. Jonathan's here with us. Hi, Jonathan. Hello. So, hi there. Yeah. OK, so the costs of selling on Amazon India are very, very cheap. And you'll see in the next uh, slide, you'll see that um, the very refer low referral fees. And uh, next, please. Yeah, you can see some of the referral fees because we're used to 15% Amazon referral fees. And look at this, uh, you know, some of the referral fees from Amazon, 6% in baby, 7% office, 11% kitchen, beauty. Well, it depends on which kind of beauty, 4% or 9%. But you can see they're very low uh quite a different uh, ball game and it's nice and one of the reasons i think is also because amazon is trying to be competitive to sellers because they want to get more of the sellers also and you know they're competing with walmart which is flipkart and some of the other marketplaces yeah so uh yeah and of course there are a lot of complexities as viral also pointed out uh the certification that you need a local entity with regulatory compliance there's tax structure which is gst uh you know and then there's tds um which is tax deductible at source a uh, bit of a complex thing but yes it is something you have to do and very strict compliance legal tax and corporate compliances um and uh keep going uh so these are some of the compliance tax uh, and now this is uh where jonathan comes in and jonathan can you uh explain a little bit more about this so, so first and foremost, uh, hello everyone, and uh, thank you, Megla and team, for having us on the call. Uh, sorry for being late, dropping children at school uh, this morning. Um, but uh, yes, uh, so my my role within the global seller solutions world is uh, compliance operations. So, uh, like I usually jest to everyone, is uh, if you don't see me, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do see me, there's something to worry about. Uh, so what I take care of within GSS and like Sumesh has uh, kindly come on to is a, I look at the compliances and regulations within the, United, within the Indian market. Uh, I keep track of that and I work with a team of uh, legal professionals as well as with accounting firms locally in India, as well as uh, 
uh, nominee directors who are actually specially selected for this, not uh, just anyone uh, we take. So coming back to Sumesh, what he said is there is a riot of opportunity. There's a lot of things to have, which is happening in India. However, India, to a certain extent, is what they call a protected market. And by that, it means is uh, it has a lot of rules and regulations which are uh, often very unique to uh, the Indian subcontinent versus uh, that you would find in a lot of other countries. Uh, for example, you know, the setting up of companies, uh, the managing of uh, how board meetings take place in a lot of other countries is a little more, I would say, relaxed. Whereas in India, it's uh, there is a, a very big level of complexity of dealing with both at the state level and at the central level. And like Sumesh mentioned, uh, there are some unique taxes that take place within the Indian subcontinent, like uh, GST, uh, which is a tax that is a you're almost prepaying in taxes before you're actually uh, accumulating the tax to pay. And you have to pay that almost on a monthly, and there's a monthly, even quarterly reporting on top of that. So there is a lot of complexities involved. Uh, I'm not going to read out from here, but uh, there is a significant level. And India also has its equivalent of the GDPR, which is the Indian Data Protection Rules. It's currently still in Parliament as well. And this is where you have to, how you manage people's data as well. So, and yes, if they need to be strict, they can be. So it's always good to err on the side of caution and make sure you meet these regulatory requirements. Uh, if we may go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So how we how how it works with us is uh, pretty simple. Uh, us as a company, Global Seller Solutions, you would engage with a company like ours, and what we would do is we would work with you, understand what your requirements are, and then set something up for you, uh, which meets all the regulatory requirements. Uh, obviously, the huge advantage you have, obviously, working with a company like ourselves, is uh, we take care of all these regulations and compliances and. Uh, we are aware there are uh, cheaper options, but uh, when you do start diving deep into them, you start realizing uh, what it takes away from you is a significant amount of your time and you having to research a lot of local knowledge. Uh, it would take you away from your own product. It would take you away from what matters most, which is uh, selling and uh, you know, building your brand and building your company. Uh, within the Indian subcontinent. And that's why a lot of, uh, uh, that's why we set up what we have. And that is because uh, we take care of all those aspects. You just have to worry about uh, selling. Um, yeah, so if, if you could uh, go to the next slide, please. Uh, yeah. Right. So, uh, so Mesh, yeah, please go ahead. Well, Jonathan, maybe you can explain. Uh, Megla, would you mind going back to the previous slide? Just explain oh, to right. the cost and the whole thing. Oh yes, sorry, I, I did. I did brush over that. I do apologize. So we do have a one. We have a we have a we have a strict criteria of those companies that we let in, and I I believe uh, I'm not sure if Jasmine's going to talk about that a little later, but. Uh, what we have is we, we the companies that we do look to invite and bring on board within the global seller solutions uh, environment and uh, ecosystem are those that are mature, already have a running business within the Amazon world, uh, at least making close to, uh, making a significant amount of money and uh, have expertise in at least one, if not two uh, markets. And by that, because because of the way the Indian market is formed, the way the uh, regulations and the time taken to set up, uh, someone needs to have that, uh, you could say, thick skin and understanding of it takes time to do something like this uh, because it is a protected market. Uh, but once, the, once, the, once, the get, uh, once it gets going, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an amazing journey. Uh, from a costing perspective, what we've tried to do is we have, uh, from our last figures, I've also worked it down. And what we're looking at costs $9,500 uh, over a year. But what this $9,500 uh, takes care of is all the tax uh, paperwork, all the corporate paperwork, the legal paperwork. Uh, this includes your accounting paperwork, which is a uh, bookkeeping within a fair use policy, uh, all your regulations with FEMA, which is your foreign uh, foreign departments within the United, within the Indian uh, com uh, country. Uh, we also take care of, uh, and that's close to 218 line items to be precise, which is a lot uh, to do over a year. 
and that's what we take care of. We also take care of what they call the uh, nominee director within the country that uh, is there as a representative for your company. And we take care of, he takes care of also any local uh, fungery requirements as well. And I must stress on that, that is the compliance elements of the company as well. So that's something you don't need to always worry about uh, from a costing perspective. Uh, we yeah, also do offer... Yeah. yeah. So uh, obviously we know the value is pretty high, but at the same time we do offer, uh, there is a financial, we've tied up with some companies that allow you to stage that over a period of uh, 12 months. Uh, and again, that's something we can work with you and talk to you about. Feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we can obviously discuss those requirements. Uh, yeah. Uh, Somesh, you okay if I hand it over to you for the next slide? Yeah, sure. Great. So this is just a very interesting uh, hypothetical sc scenario that we came up with because uh, it helps you to see, because remember at the beginning we talked about how adding another marketplace can increase your company valuation and your growth by diversifying. So let's assume that we took, let's say you've got uh, this column, uh, sorry, this table with, with the column on the left showing the population of each marketplace uh, and uh, which country it is uh, or marketplace it is. So if you look at it, say the UK and the EU have around six, uh, close to 600 million people between them. And the US has about 327, Canada has 37.5 and India has 1.33 billion people. And the online buyers in the UK is close to about 350 plus million. US is 214 million, Canada is 9.2, and India, as you can see, is 425 million and growing at 6 million per month, okay? So, like, hypothetically, let's say if you were doing 300K, and if you were to extrapolate those same figures, uh, 300K, 300K, 500K, 50K, and then based on the same ratio and population, you could potentially be doing 800K uh, in, the, in India, and let's say profit, well, anywhere from 10, 15 to 20%. So if you were to do that, then the opportunity lost would be 160K by not doing India. So is it worth it? Well, that's your decision. But, but let's say, what would your business be valued at by adding the Indian marketplace? It's almost one and a half times, 150%. So that's pretty good uh, by adding that one marketplace. And also the fact is that uh, I forgot to mention this. This is very interesting. But Amazon India and Flipkart, which is Walmart, are not allowed to sell their own products. So technically, the Indian government gave them a choice. You can, buddies, you can do one thing. Either you be a marketplace facilitator and you allow others to sell, or you be an e-commerce seller. You can't do both, which is what they do in, in the US and UK. So Amazon regularly poaches... Um, you know your products well i hope they're not here but anyway uh but but they will if you've got a best seller they'll just create their own version of it and it'll go under amazon basics or something like that but they can't do that in india so you're safe and they're also not allowed to hold more than 25 percent share of any company that is selling on amazon india so they cannot technically produce uh, you know products under another brand which they own and then you know sneak in that loop they, they can't do it. it's 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 interesting you mentioned that Sumesh, uh, and that is because uh, they did try that a few years ago yes. and the regulation caught up to them very fast yes mm -hmm. uh, yes that's right yeah so so yeah so, so the indian government has been a bit more savvy and ahead and they've been trying to close off all these loopholes which actually works for us well they do okay somebody says they post products in india also well yeah, I'm sure they're finding ways around it, but the, the official regulation at least is <laughs> this way, but maybe they found some new ways. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next thing. Okay, so this is where Jasmine comes in. She's going to talk about uh, the opportunity. Yeah, so the regulations are quite difficult, but we un understand them well, and we're here to guide you and help you get going. So what we'd like to show you now is... Uh, the, the opportunity for sellers, like if you look at Amazon USA, <clears throat> the population size 330 million and the number of sellers, there's 2 million. 
if you look at UK and EU, there's 513 million population and three or four million sellers. Now look at India, it has 1.33 billion, as we mentioned, and there's only 600,000 sellers at the moment. And that, that, so you can see it's very early days for sellers. And um, can you please move to the next slide? So it's just a huge opportunity. Sorry, go back to the, yeah. And it's a great time to get started selling in Amazon India. And uh, the, when we got started in other markets in the US and the UK, those who started years ago in the beginning will find that it was a lot easier versus the ones who came in later. And it would be the same in India too. The competition is only set to grow and increase and increase. And so Amazon's only five years old in India and the amount of market penetration is amazing. And it's just changed India in so many ways, like not only big, big um, cities have opportunity to buy all, all these goods, but now the smaller cities also. And Amazon has set themselves up that they can deliver the products all over India. So it's a huge opportunity for India. And it's just a great opportunity. Yeah, you know, in a way, uh, this picture actually illustrates the the opportunity and the strength of it because, you know, it's like a surf a surfing uh, wave. You know, you you ride the wave, but actually in India, the wave is just about getting started. You know, you're, you're not even like at the top of it because if you look at the U.S., for example, people who got started on Amazon back in the year 2000, 2001, or beginning of the 21st century, as we know, uh, you know, they, they've been like still selling, you know, they've grown, they've become, you know, very established and people have still kept coming. And we've got 20 years of history on e-commerce mm -hmm. already and growing. It's not slowing down. And India is just getting started. So it's like right at the beginning, you know, and as you saw from the previous slide where we had such a big, huge opportunity as far as the number of sellers to the existing population. So there's so much growth. And uh, yeah, so we, we think that there's one question which has come in, Sumesh, uh, from Robin, which is uh, what type of products are they buying in so India? In uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, hi, hi, yeah. sorry. <laughs> hi. So yeah, I will take the questions now. Um, so thanks a lot for that, Samesh yeah. and Jonathan. Um, very informative and uh, definitely huge opportunity for everybody in India. So guys, if you have any questions for um, either Viral or Samesh, Jonathan, Jasmine, type them in the comments now and let's start taking questions. So... Okay, someone is asking, are there any specific rules for NRI? So NRI is for people who don't know, uh, refers to non-resident Indians. So Jonathan, Samesh, what do you guys uh, know about this? Yes, uh, there are some, there are, there is, well, I could go through the details, but uh, I'll, I'll, to answer them shortly, there are a certain requirements within the NRI rules when it comes to the way the PAN is being treated, as well as the setting up of the company. You have some specific uh, forms that need to be filled in order to meet your RBI requirements and your FEMA requirements. But uh, to answer the question bluntly, it doesn't stop you from selling in India. So it's similar to maybe a foreigner, right? I mean, the requirements are similar to a foreigner or are you yes, treated yeah. more as a citizen? It, it, like it, if it, you it, have it, an Indian passport, are you treated more as a citizen or? That, that... It, it, it depends on the tax residency of the person. Yeah. And mm. if you're a non-resident, then it will apply because then the operations of that company is something called permanent establishment, is PE. And it's based on where the... Uh, the the control is exercised. This is technical, but if you're yeah. doing it from abroad, then it becomes a foreign company. So you have to apply for foreign ownership and the same rules will apply for any other foreign company. So yeah, so that's kind of, those are some of the things. But anyway, we, we don't want to get into too much of that because it's quite technical. But as an NRI, you're basically like an Indian. I'm an NRI and um, and the only difference is I can't be the prime minister of India. <laughs> you can have an NRI with an Indian passport or a foreign passport, but you can have OCI. So technically you can run an Indian business, but again, depending on where you're based, the rules apply according to that because it's the company that matters and the ownership. 
So that's slightly technical, but it can be quite complex. Yeah. Jasmine, I'd vote for you. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so let's come back to Nada's question. So she was also asking, can I use my EU company? You know, so what do you guys think about that? What if somebody has maybe, you know, like a US company or a Singapore company, can they open a representative office or, you know, a, a branch or is that another way to uh, operate or do they have to open another Indian entity? Uh, there is a requirement that they, it, you need to to meet regulatory compliances and make life easy. It is a lot safer and better to open up a local entity when selling in India. Uh, the amount of duty you would pay depending on your product would be pretty significant otherwise, uh, almost making you not able to compete with local market if you were just going to directly import into India. And that is because it is a protected market. Yeah, one, one thing that I, I think we should stress on here, uh, and we didn't address this, uh, but it is a unique rule uh, as applicable to India, and that is the 30% sourcing rule. Now, this is a rule. Now, it may change in the future, but right now, as far as we know, it applies. And that is, let's say you're importing goods from China or anywhere else, uh, and your con your company is only allowed to have one brand okay so it's one brand per company you can have multiple brands if you're a foreign owner but you will have to get special rbi reserve bank of india permission now that brand let's say i have a brand called uh, somesh and then uh, i'm importing something from china or you know the us or australia and this is coming in 100 percent imported goods it's allowed You'll pay duties and tariffs or whatever. But the rule says, the 30% sourcing rule says that something, either we're sourcing new products under that brand from within India to export outside, or the product that we're importing into India has to be modified. And 30% of that product cost has to be, uh, the, the revenue cost, sorry, 30% of that revenue cost has to be done in India. Now you can, I, let's say if I'm selling uh, mugs, from Australia in India, and I'm importing them 100%. And maybe I, I want to source toothbrushes from India or something, and then export them out under that brand. I can do that, but it has to be the 30% thing. And you don't have to do it immediately. They give you some time. I think it's three to five years. I'm not yep. sure. I think it's three years. And then you have to make sure that you comply with that. So that is just a unique rule. Uh, so you have to be aware of this as a foreign company if you're doing that. And also, the other thing about the brand is that you can't just set up a brand today and I trademark a new brand, and then I next year, uh, next month, I apply uh, to register that, you know, start selling under that brand. No, you have to be have some history behind that brand and show that it's an existing brand. So you can't just do it straight away, you know, like in other marketplaces. So there are some uh complexities that you just have to be aware you can plan this is for people who are looking long term and also the other thing jonathan you're going to talk about closing down companies in india yeah uh to close a company down in india generally takes uh close to two years to do so yes uh you so, can't just uh, wake up one day and realize yeah i've had enough i don't want to, to be in this market anymore and uh, uh you know send in a n62 which you would in most some countries uh in this country, unfortunately, in in India, you will require to. Uh, it is a two-year closing uh, phase, uh, yes, which so. is very long drawn out. But uh, exactly. I'm, so it's, I'm it's sure, funny. Viral, you can, you agree with me there. I can see that saying yes. I've heard of this. Yeah. So yeah, you, so you're you're in for the long haul. You know, you can't just <laughs> pretend. Okay, it's like you know, I'm coming in, and oh, if I don't like it, I'm going to sit out. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Yeah. About it, but it's like we said, the opportunity is huge, and we're all. You will say that he already said it's huge, but you've got to make sure that you're prepared yeah. for it. You know? Yeah. Okay. And right. that's why the tear off regulations, because they want to make sure they get the right people in selling in India as well, the government, because it's being protected. Right. Okay. So let's take Robin's question. What types of products are they buying in India? India style products or more European styled products? So, Viral, do you want to take this question and? You know, just yeah. give an overview of, let's, let's talk about, um, 
you know, in general, the types of products, but then also maybe we can talk about one specific category. So you said home and kitchen is the top category. And, uh, you know, that is also one of the categories that a lot of sellers in our Facebook group, they export to the US. So yeah, first give us an overview of, you know, all types of products, and then let's specifically dig into home and kitchen. Okay. So um, if you see India, generally, um, uh, like, I mean, all, almost all categories work well, uh, except the pet pet category, which is now growing, or the, you know, or, or which category I would say, like, you know, motorbikes or machine parts. These are like the very, very slow growing uh, market. Otherwise, there is something called home improvements. There is, uh, there is uh, home and kitchen, sports, uh, health and personal care. These are booming like uh, very, very fast. Beauty is also doing fabulous. So... Uh, let's say if uh, if you want to see which products are selling better in India, generally uh, from India, a lot of beauty products are produced. Like, you know, you a lot of shampoos, organic, Ayurvedic, all these things are manufactured and are purchased by India. So Indian people generally like to go with uh, in terms of like, you know, beauty and other products, uh, like all which is natural and something without chemicals, right? So something like that is also booming. Um, home decor, like they... Um, I would say in terms of clothing and everything, yes, they would prefer a little bit of European style. But when it comes to uh, like home and kitchen and everything, um, I don't see so much of that. Yeah. So it's more local Indian style. Local, yeah. Because because if you see, uh, not only because of the style, because if you see the, the, the home structure, the way we live, everything is very, very different as compared to uh, European. Like, you know, we, we stay, we don't have apartments. We have like uh, huge, huge buildings and we like, we don't have big houses. So everything mm. that is there, it's, it's certainly different. So not same exactly can be replicated over here. Yeah, also to point out that India is a huge country and, um, you know, there are all sorts of, you know, people <laughs> living yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in the country. Yeah. So, for example, in the cities, you may find, um, you know, the, the economically really well off people who are um, living in bigger houses. But of course, not the majority. But, you know, yeah. there are those kinds of people and they are maybe buying more of the imported stuff and more of the expensive high end premium kind of products as well. Yeah. So like a, a lot of the branded products, for example. But at the same time, you know, you also have the smaller cities, like the, um, um, you know, maybe um, the cities that, um, you know, what what do they call like the second tier cities, <laughs> right? I mean, not the metropolitans like yeah. Mumbai, Delhi, um, you know, Kolkata and all those kinds of bigger cities, but the second tier cities where there are maybe people who are not that economically well off and they are buying more of the, you uh, uh, you know, more affordable products. So I think it's sort of a mixed market. But um, yeah, I kind of agree yeah. with you. I mean, the Indian style products maybe are a little more in demand than than the European style products. For example, you know, the really high end Radabad metal products that are quite popular in the US or UK, maybe those will not do well in India because yeah. they, those are like too high end. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But like yeah, I mean, could, this, yeah. this is a very good uh, point that you have pointed out. Like the the, the most expensive ones uh, from Moradabad, the metal and those works, uh, no yeah. one would pay so much for this in India because they kind of seen and they don't have a you know, inclination towards buying that. So right. obviously, that would not do that. Yeah. Also, I was going to just say, uh, add to what Megla you were saying is that even if you are selling products that are say European or Western or foreign there is a demand for that it's not that it's not Remember, yeah. it has to be localized in some way yeah. either the advertising pitch or the actual design or somehow it has to be because you know if you think about uh some of the big brands like uh you know dominoes for example you know they came up with this line which is in this hindi english hungry kya dominoes car it's kind of like you know it's a mixture of it means are you hungry uh, eat dominoes it sounds very blah you know in english but in hindi it's catchy because it's that mix. also the ikea they came you know they sell swedish cuisine so they came up with swedishy cuisine yes exactly <laughs> swedishy is, is, is like indian you know homegrown kind of thing and right the girls, they did the the mac burger, burger became the maharaja burger you know, so that's they, right yeah, i mean you have to adopt and keep changing as per what you know what would be in, like, for example 
Yeah, like for example, uh, right now uh, Narendra Modi is promoting Made in India, so they started you know Atma Nirbhar, Atma Nirbhar. So all the products have images with Atma Nirbhar. So you know to promote that campaign, so you have to adopt and like any which ways when you do a product research, you understand what kind of products are there. So you don't have to use so much of brain. Go go on Amazon India, just see the category and you understand what is the taste, what are the best sellers. You understand what it is, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even uh, just just. Uh, little anecdote about how when KFC first launched in India, they were trying to go down the India, the US, US American, route, yeah. you know, route. And people were upset because yeah. they were using things like, you know, pork fat, lard, and, you know, stuff like that. And that was very offensive to the Indian culture. And there were protests and in the end, uh, KFC had to shut down. And then finally, they had to reinvent themselves with a new approach, which was mm. Because, you know, you, you can't just think, hey, it works in the US, so therefore it will work in India. It's not. So you have to adapt, like what Viral said. And then they reinvented themselves and they came. And now KFC is a pretty popular brand all over the country and it's growing like crazy. But but yeah. you just have to find that. Do that. Otherwise, uh, there will, there will yeah. be a discussion. Well, I guess I guess uh, um, talking about all that, you've got um, <laughs> all those millions and billions of people that um, if you can find um, a product um, or, or a market that, that people um, want, I mean, you've got a lot of it, you know, you've got potentially got a lot of people that want to buy a certain product, but not everybody in India can afford that product. That's, that's what I see in India I, because of I, the... You know the population you've got you know a sort of poor population then you've got a middle class population and then you've got you know a, a, a rich population within the same sort of country and so who do you, who do you target for all yeah i mean also if you see like uh it's it's not that the european or other 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 you know other taste is not uh you know adopted by indians so there are so many people whom we have spoken they they are you know importing goods from australia and they are successful on amazon india they said yeah. it. Yeah. so you have to so like in terms of supplements um i've seen a lot of foreign brands doing well in india because uh i mean the trust factor and everything is huge like you know people know that these brands are there uh so yeah. when so it's very easy to sell uh, a lot of uh, you know handmade stuff from australia is also doing good over here so it is a mix but you have to understand and see what works for you like there is no yeah. pinpoint that it's going to work but yeah there are people who are doing well but you have to have some uniqueness right like when you're coming up let's say if australia is good in some you know say, say dairy products let's say you start importing that that will do well because they know australia is good for the dairy product and yeah. you advertise like you know natural from australia something like that then it, it should work. It, it's not that it won't work. It has been proven from a lot of people who are doing it. Uh, also, there are few people who are, uh, you know, there are few brands in the US uh, which were, which has never uh, been uh, started in India. So there are few people who do only exclusive. They have done exclusive tie-ups with them. And these brands, are like only these people sell uh, their brand in Amazon. And they are doing pretty well. Like they are, they are doing pretty well. So it is there, you know. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that you there is a chance and there are people who are selling uh, things which are in the US or Europe in India and they're pretty successful as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think demand for those kinds of products is growing as well because uh, yep. recently somebody posted a report from Austrade in our Facebook group and um, I haven't gone through the entire report in detail, but there are lots of opportunities that are identified for Australian businesses in India. And I also know that uh, the Australian government actually worked with Amazon India a couple of months ago, and there was a whole campaign to promote Australian made products in India. And on Amazon India itself, there was a separate section promoting Australian products. So I think that is definitely a huge opportunity. And a lot of these products, I think, are, you know, the opportunity also lies in food products. That could be something that people could definitely, you know, explore if they are into those those types of. Uh, yeah, that was a that was a very interesting report, actually, Megla. I went through that. Yeah. And it was sort of wine, uh, and it was different yeah. regions, wasn't it? Different regions as well, and different regions like Bangladesh, um, South of India, and there was certain targeted in different regions. But very interesting report, and that um, Austrade obviously worked very closely with India. And potentially are looking to India for for business. 
Exactly. And I was also a couple of months ago talking to Amazon India. So they have this separate department that um, that helps onboard overseas brands. And so they were looking for, you know, actively looking for brands that are successful in other markets like Amazon Singapore, Amazon Australia. And they were trying to help them to uh, start selling on Amazon India. So they're definitely trying to attract overseas brands as well. I mean, and yeah. of course, the reason they're doing it be is because there is demand for such, you know, such products. So, okay, let's take a few more questions here. So Rahul is asking, can we start selling in Amazon starting as part time? Since I'm full time employed in banking, I also want to start side hustle with Amazon. Of course, it's a good idea, Rahul. I mean, that's what most <laughs> people do. <laughs> We're all here, Rahul. <laughs> Of course, yeah, but of course, it's, yeah. it's not easy, you know, uh, yeah. setting up an Amazon business yeah. or any entrepreneurial venture is not easy. So you have to be willing to put in the hours and, you know, skip your Netflix for product research. <laughs> yeah. And I think probably the Indian market isn't the one to start in. Obviously, as you know, we've just discussed, you would need to start in, you know, US or somewhere first, get yourself going. Um, it's no good thinking you can start in India because you're not established and you're not going to be successful. So I think people need to think it's not something that they can just decide, oh, I think I'll sell in India because it's got more opportunity. They've got to start and work their way towards India over time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's a very good point you bring up because we tend to actually dissuade people who are doing a first-time startup in India, especially Amazon, because mm. it is not easy. Uh, and yeah, part time. <laughs> it sounds great. I, I think he's from India only. I think he's from <laughs> yeah. India. Yeah, I think he's from India too. Oh, so Rahul, I think what you should do is get in touch with Viral, and he'll be able to yeah. guide you on how to start selling on Amazon India. So it's definitely yeah. easier I, if you are a local. Hey guys, I, I can see a lot of sort of good partnerships developing uh, with certain people over time uh, because I think the Indian market is rife. For um, you know, gen for genuine partnerships, people a lot of people don't you know a, bi a business relationship or business partnership is a difficult thing to enter into, you know, because you know trust, um, you know, you know someone you don't sort of trust them, um, so it's not something you for the faint-hearted <laughs> to uh, enter into, and um, you know because of the Indian market and and Jonathan because of the complexities, um, you have to have. A partner to um, whether you, whether you want a partner or you don't want a partner, you have to have a partner, and so, <laughs> you know it's uh, one of those things, unfortunately. And um, you know you got to sort of, I guess, choose wisely if you're going to have a partner. Uh, yeah, and Kevin, that's very very well put because uh, I'm sure a lot of people know those who have had yeah. the experience. Uh, the Indian IT department and other departments tend to shoot first and ask questions a few years later. <laughs> <laughs> when it's, it's not information technology; it's income tax. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the income tax department. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we've I've I've dealt and worked with companies who have uh, just suddenly got a random slap on the wrist, frozen their accounts, and uh, a few months later, they suddenly decide to entertain uh, questions. So, yes. Yeah. What's, the, what's, the old, what's the old saying, guys? You can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a lot like Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Awesome. So, guys, if you have any questions for our panelists, uh, type them in the comments now. We're, we'll start to wrap up here, and I'm going to display their email addresses here. So, if you're if you want to understand more what kinds of products sell better on Amazon India and if you want to if you want help with you know product selection or you know how to do PPC for example how to launch products how to get reviews then you need to get in touch with Viral so this is his email address cyrusnvega at gmail.com and I'll also post a Calendly link where you can actually schedule a call with him so he'll do a one hour call uh, of course it's not free but whatever it's a, it's a nominal fee that you'd need to pay to set up the call with him and the link will be posted in the description of this post um, and you can get a consultant consultancy call with him. And um, then if you do want to go ahead, so this call with Viral, I think, is sort of the first step. And it'll help you decide if you if your product is right for Amazon and if you do want to go ahead. And if you do decide to go ahead, then you need to contact, you know, Somesh and uh, Jasmine and Jonathan. And they will help with all of the um, 
setting up your company and all of the legal regulatory uh, requirements, they are the people to help with that. So this is their email address, hello at globalsellersolutions.com. And we'll also post the email address um, in the post description. Um, okay, so let's start wrapping up over here. Anything else, um, Mark, Kevin, or anybody else? Do you well, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd just like to say it's a, it's, a, it's a great topic, guys. I mean, and you covered it really well, I must admit. Uh, Varel, you in depth. Um, I and mean, you, you, you're on, you're a man on the, on the ground in India, you sort of know what's going on. And obviously, you know, some S Jasmine, uh, Jonathan, you know, you sort of know the sort of company, the technicalities. I think, you know, if someone's, this, if someone's going to go into India, it's definitely a journey and you're going to have to, you're going to have to have help. And if you get the wrong help, um, it could be a difficult journey. Would I be wrong in saying that? Uh, no, you'd be right in saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll be. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, fantastic um, uh, presentations, guys. Well done. Yes, I think it's sort of clarified a lot because I think a lot of people selling, you know, in America or just starting out are thinking, oh, maybe we can try India. But I think, um, as has been pointed out, it's a, a costly exercise, so it's not you know, something you can just do quickly and it's not for the faint-hearted because obviously you've got to jump through a lot of hoops and be very patient. So it's not something that you can get something up and running and be selling in a couple of months because it's going to take... But, Mark, I, Mark I, I bet you there's a lot of corporate people who, if they're watching this tonight, it's, you know, the, the, there's a lot of help for the, the um, corporate people yeah. around the world. I've got, you know, they're the ones that got, you know, selling globally and uh, there's a lot of help on the ground for sort of corporate people to maybe cut the red tape for them. Yeah, and I think it's a great opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and there are lots of those, I mean, lots of big brands in the U.S., of right? Of course, um, yeah, Especially right. If you're selling supplements and, um, and you know, a lot of the you're, Chinese you're, brands too. Yeah. <laughs> some of them Regular, are huge. The, the U.K., <laughs> EU, you know, sort of all, all, everywhere in sort of Europe, right around the world, you know, people – global companies are always looking for opportunities, I guess, to, you know, what's the next move? And, um, you know, I mean, they have analysts in the companies that follow the different trends and, you know, what's going on and they sort of know what's what's happening to the minute. But, you know, India is a very interesting place and the people are very interesting. The products that come out of in, in, in India are very interesting. And we just touched on, um, you know, uh, we're in the home decor sort of um, uh, uh, pass and you're just saying Varel that you know that that sort of pass is deemed uh you know anybody can buy that sort of thing in any sort of little place they go into any little mart and um, so it's not really an expensive product but then you take that outside of India and you put it in a brick and mortar shop shop it's a fantastic product and people will pay you know because it's been made handmade and people will pay a premium for that so the horse Horse is the courses, but you know it's working through the minefield of of um, you know um, <laughs> what sits right and where type of thing. Yeah, and I think there are just so many product categories that can yeah. be explored. So you know the, the metal products, of course, it's it's more export oriented. I think yeah. the Muradabad kind of metal products, but I wonder if they do make you know some other types of metal products that are maybe not that high end or premium yeah. that could be sold yeah. in the domestic market and there's textiles that's a huge category oh, and wow. you know of course yeah. the, all of the, the the textiles that we see a lot of them have those indian in, in, you know style prints that would be quite popular in india so you know fashion accessories and and other types of glass, textile all, all products glass, glass products ceramic ceramic um, yeah. Yeah, Ste and, and every, every, yeah. all the metal items, everything works in India as well. Uh, it, it's just that the price point, you have to be very careful. Like you cannot have a $7, you know, $3, $4 sourcing and sell it at a, you know, $15, $16, $17. It, you just have to be a little bit cautious of the pricing. It, it, could, it could not be a very, very high end price. But yes, definitely all the metal works, everything works in India itself also. Like I've sold, I'm still selling a lot. Uh, in terms of the metals and everything. It works very, very good in terms of the abroad because you can charge a lot of money. You can pay for higher finish. Everything you can pay a little bit extra and you can get it. But India, you have to be a little bit, it's not very, very price sensitive, but you have to be a little bit sensitive. Like you cannot go overboard. Otherwise, your sales will be only limited to that kind of uh, you know, market. Yeah. And you might have also a lot of returns. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, 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 but I, yeah, but but I've seen that average is around ten to twelve percent. But for you, like for my good products, I just see six to seven percent, and that also comes majorly because of undelivered products. So we can't control that. But that's how mm-hmm. it is. Like you have to incur mm-hmm. that cost and you have to move ahead. That's a thing. Right? Hey guys, that happens on the US marketplace too. <laughs> and I'm sure it happens in every marketplace. Um, you know, returns. No, I, I, meant, I, I meant more if your price is very high. Ah, oh, sorry. Just, yeah. That it's yeah. not value for money, then you'll have a return. Mm-hmm. Of course. Okay, okay, okay. Of course. That way. Yeah. Is, um, that, is that right, uh, Viral? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- that is like if you can, you cannot give a shady, shady product. Like if you, yeah. you if you have beautiful pictures and everything, and then they see that your packaging is shit, and so obviously they would return. <laughs> but then you can make the branding aspect very, very good. Your packaging should be like it should look like that kind of money, right? Otherwise, yes. no. I, I think also, Viral, correct me if I'm wrong, but because India has such a huge social media presence, you know, one third of Facebook is in India. So any brands that work with a lot of social media, I think would probably do well because yeah. India Indians are really, really active on social media. So if yeah, you've got a yeah. good brand presence and social media presence, and if you can target yourself and your audience, it'll work very well. Yeah, of course, yes. That's true. I think one category we haven't really talked about is electronics. So uh-huh. I feel that is like <laughs> the best selling category. Yeah. And um, yeah. But but in electronics, uh, the thing is electronics is like one of the best, best, like you, you can make a killer, but the complexity of importing uh, electronics in India is huge. Like you have mm-hmm. so many compliances. That's the reason I'm not even talking so much about electronics. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it, it's a, it's a, Obviously, it's a booming, booming category. Everything works like hotcakes in India in terms of electronics. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And well, well, yeah. do you think that some of the uh, complexities, as as you know, twenty say twenty twenty one proves to be a year that India moves forward at lightning speed. Do, do you do you think some of them complexities will go away with sort of import exports? Uh, I don't know about the export, but uh, yeah, import like uh, see the major majority of the import comes from China. Like it is yeah. all everywhere. It's the same thing. Yeah, of course, um, exactly. Yeah, but but, but right yeah. now there are a lot of issues coming up with India and China border issues. Right now they banned Alibaba also after TikTok and yeah. uh, all the apps, uh, WeChat. So I don't see a very much liberal policies coming in terms of import with relations to China as of now. But yeah, export yeah. is going to boom because a lot yeah. of campaigns of Made in India is going to be promoted. I, I, for all, I didn't mean China Pacific. I meant, yeah, yeah. you know, the mentality of like India in overall, in, in, as far as, you know, some of the um, rules in India can, can can sort of hold 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 it back. Whereas, you know, if, if 2021 comes along and India's now got to move forward, you know, because of, um, you know, the world demand of, of yeah. stuff. But do you think India will actually, you know, let loose instead of being such a, um, you know, <laughs> I, I know it, it, it's very sort of got a lot of um, uh, government, uh, you know, sort of things in place that is very hard to, yeah, you know, a lot of red tape. But if we can get through the red tape, do you think it, India will ever sort of let loose on some of the red tape? Uh I think they are, um, you know, Kevin, you're right. Um, what, what happened is during COVID, because a lot of the offices were closed and, you know, they yeah. have sort of been forced to go digital yeah, and do yeah, things yeah. online. So I think that Absolutely. has definitely happened. And I'm seeing that myself, you know, like, uh, for example, I applied for a passport and it was just so much more efficient than previous yeah. years. I don't know why. I don't think it's because of COVID or whatever. But no. um, I think overall, the processes are becoming more efficient and even the taxes and, you know, just Jonathan and Somesh, you can um, probably speak to that a little bit more, but I think they are digitizing a lot of the stuff. And the complexities, the reason they have the complexities and the hoops and all is mostly to protect the domestic market and to protect domestic businesses because it's a huge population. If they just open up the entire market, then it's going to be very devastating to, you know, smaller entrepreneurs in in India. And India has always really promoted micro um micro what are they called micro smes right yeah, small um, and medium yeah. Space space. My, micro small and mid- medium enterprises they've always really promoted those so they're gradually opening up the economy and getting letting more 
overseas investors in, but at the same time, they want to protect the, the, the domestic manufacturers and companies yeah, as well. Absolutely. I, I, I sort of, yeah. um, I, 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 you know, I admire the India the way it looks after its own market, you know, its own people. That's good. We did the same thing in, in, in Australia many years ago where we didn't, you know, sort of, you know, before the floodgates opened, there's a lot of yeah. European and Chinese things that we wasn't allowed to come in here. Um, but mm. what I'm saying is now that India, um, because of COVID, um, and because of certain things that in India now is in a position that maybe in 21, 2021 and going forward that there might be like a, 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 an explosion of you know people wanting to to get goods you know manufactured in India rather mm -hmm. than you know without sort of putting and, anything on China. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. And Kevin, the, that's a good point you bring up. And with the changes in the rules, especially this yeah. year, of how foreign entities can set up. Yeah. They are opening the gates, definitely. I can say there yeah. is a boom and it is coming. And yeah. uh, Indians do love tech. I mean, I have friends who... <laughs> yeah, <we know. laughs> I, I, have fr I have friends who sometimes call me and say, hey, we can't get this. Can you buy it for us and ship it over? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Uh, but uh, uh, they, they do love tech. And uh, yeah. like you said, and I think you said it very clearly, if you do crack it and you do get it in, uh, yeah, you will be a force to be reckoned with, definitely. Yeah, for sure. I think that the whole thing is that you have to look at it as, you know, in the big picture. Yes, I mean, it can be a difficult marketplace to get into because it's not the same, but it's not impossible. It's not the same as the US, for example, but it's difficult, but it's still worth it. It's like starting an Amazon business, you know, it's difficult, right? Anywhere in the world is difficult. There is some learning curve, but when you do it, then it's worth it. So that's the thing. It's the same, you know, in, there's, in, there's a trade-off. In fact, it is like a marriage, right? You have yes. to do it long term. It's not like a girlfriend, right? Yes. <laughs> and it can Very come good. and go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hope my wife doesn't see this. <laughs> ask, ask Margaret about all her, um, a lot of her students um, how, they, how they're traveling on the US this week. Yeah, it's a bit of a it's nightmare over there. It's some of the issues to be. Yeah. Right, but, that's well uh, said, Vera. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well awesome. Done. So I think that was a great session, and Akhtar Malik is saying very informative. Thank you so much, Akhtar. Pleasure. Bill and Mary Kershaw, thanks for another informative session. Thank You're you welcome, so much. Bill and Mary. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, yeah, guys, get in touch with Viral, Sumesh, Jasmine, and, and Jonathan, but only if you are ready to <laughs> explore the Indian market and you are experienced selling on Amazon in other marketplaces right. as well. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for your time today. And um, Mark, Kevin, I will see you on Saturday. We forgot to mention we have a holiday special yeah. Yeah. <laughs> virtual yeah. India Sourcing Show coming up. So in December, mm -hmm. we're not doing our regular VIS show with suppliers, but uh -huh. we are doing a holiday special with all of the IST coaches. So we have Tim Jordan, Gary Huang, and Chris Thomas joining us. And um, it's going to be aired on Saturday, 12 p.m., Melbourne time, 9 a.m. Singapore time. And uh, that is 7 p.m. Pacific time on Friday. <laughs> so, so. People have had to tune in because uh, I sort of did, was going to play a game of golf, but I said I had to change it, Megla. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to have a bit of a party. So wear your Christmas hat, get your wine, get your coffee, um, you know, turn on the Christmas lights <laughs> and it's just going to be, um, yeah, we're going to ask our, our coaches what they think about 2021, what tips, advice they have for sellers to be successful in 2021 and what are some of the lessons that they have learned in 2020. So it's going to so be Jonathan, a fun show. Jasmine, Varel, come and join us. Come and, come and join us. <laughs> so, so you're going to ask us Wednesday with join, a guest. Join in on the side and, and have a have a sort of bit of a festive sort of thing, yeah. It's going to be too late for them. Be very late. Really? UK. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's going to be one a.m. You, you can watch the replay then. <laughs> we'll join the replay. <laughs> yeah, for Viral, we'll it's going to be early we'll morning. We have to use toothpicks for our eyelids, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys, yeah. for joining right. us Thank today. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.